It's my great pleasure to introduce my boss, Mr. Dana Deasy, the DOD Chief Information Officer. He is the primary advisor to the Secretary of Defense for matters of information management, information technology, and information assurance, as well as non-intelligent space systems, critical satellite communications, navigation and timing programs, spectrum, and telecommunications. Mr. DC has more than 35 years of experience leading and delivering large-scale IT strategies and projects. He previously held several private sector senior leadership positions, most recently as global CIO of J.P. Morgan Chase. There, he was responsible for the firm's technology systems and infrastructure across all of the firm's businesses worldwide. He managed a budget of more than $9 billion and more than 40,000 technologists supporting J.P. Morgan Chase's retail, wholesale, and asset management businesses. He was inducted into the CIO Hall of Fame in 2012, the International Association of Outsourcing Professionals Hall of Fame in 2013, and was named Transformational CIO in 2017. He assumed his current role last May and has brought an amazing energy and perspective to us in the Department of Defense. Please welcome Mr. Dana DC. Not a single question for her? Really? I expect you I expect you all to do the same for me now this morning. What do you think the over or under will be on that? All right, well good morning. All right, um, so I'd like to just start off by saying that uh, when Admiral Norton asked me to join this event and I said, what do you want me to cover? And I'll go through that speech this morning. She says, talk about your perspectives on this. And I said, well, that will be real easy because this is about threaded through just about everything we're doing across the Department of Defense, especially when it comes to the main priorities. Uh, but I just want to say thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the opportunity you've given me to join you this morning. Um, I also like to thank the people who put on these events. I think oftentimes we all rush to these events and forget that there's a heck of a lot of organization that goes into these things. And so just hats off to everybody here in the room today who made this possible. I had a chance to look at the speaker lineup. Great job on all those you recruited. And it seems like uh, for what you're going to get out of this today, you're going to talk to all the right people. So the annual forecast to the industry event is an incredibly important for the Department of Defense. It provides an, out, an ongoing dialogue with our industry partners and is needed for us to, gain, to continue to maintain superiority over our near-peer competition. As I said earlier, DISA is an integral part of the Department of Defense. And as you know, DISA has a long and distinguished history. And although the agency has only been called DISA since the early 1990s, a central location for military communications has been around the world since World War II. Of course, since the 1940s, the way that military communicates has somewhat changed, I'd say quite dra dramatically. Yet the mission remains the same, to provide secure and effective communications to the warfighter. DISA today provides a wealth of information and support to our warfighters, as well as our coalition partners around the world. Many of you are familiar with the DISA program, Defense Mobility Unclassified Capability. Now that is a mouthful, by the way, known as DMUC. You'll be happy to know this program is not only expanding, but what I'm especially thrilled to know is that the program will not in increase its cost. Good job. Just recently, when Hurricane Florence struck the Carolinas, DISA had the tools in place that were ready to support. The Army contacted DISA in order to run the Ready North Carolina application from the DMUC App Store. The mobility PMO for DOD was able to provide security analysis and accurate results that were essential to providing effective aid during the hurricane. Additionally, the South Carolina National Guard worked with DISA to create an app that was used by the guards to tell if their families were in the evacuation zone and provided real-time updates about supplies as well as school and government closings. This app provided ease of mind to the emergency workers 
because they knew their families could access updated information and were able to find a safe place for evacuation. Both these apps allowed aid workers to focus on supporting community rescue efforts. I think it goes without saying, DISA provides a wealth of capabilities in times of national crisis. So thank you to your team for everything you guys did in the Carolinas this year. Last summer, the annual exercise with DISA and the Joint Spectrum Center wrapped up their multinational exercise, which focused on rapid and interoperable communications during disaster relief. This year, the exercise included 20 Asia Pacific countries. Exercise scenarios allowed the troops the opportunity to detect radio interference and how to manage electromagnetic spectrum during a crisis situation such as large-scale flood or earthquake. No doubt these training scenarios contribute to reducing loss of life during unforeseenable natural disasters. A couple of weeks ago, I was reading an article in Signal Magazine about the information, the, the innovation that is going on at DISA to secure critical infrastructure around the world. The article highlighted the scope of the threats facing the networks and the innovative measures that DISA continually is working on to defeat those threats. And with threats evolving daily, we all know this is no small task that DISCA is undertaking. I'd like to continue elaborating DISA's efforts, but I need to get on to other things today and want to share some of my priorities. But I do want to make it abundantly clear that DISA is an incredibly valuable asset to the Department of Defense. Today, I'm taking the opportunity to share with you the priorities and the challenges that we face, not only across this great nation, but the challenges I know each and every one of you face as providers of defense and technology to us. There is no doubt that most of you here today are aware of the national security strategies that Secretary Mattis has put in place. They're shown here on this chart, and they include delivering lethality to the warfighters, fostering and growing our partnerships, and enacting reforms that will maximize resources. As you can see, these three areas tie directly back to the importance of close working relationships with you and industry. And I'm pointing these out because at the end of today in my comments, I'm going to be reminding you that when people ask what it is that each of us be focused on each and every day, whether you're working for the department or you're providing services and technology, everything needs to focus back to these three goals. When I came on board six months ago, I identified four priorities where I felt technology could make the most impact supporting the Secretary's goals for the Department. As you can see here on these charts, the modernization for the Department of Defense consists of four key elements. A cloud, enacting artificial intelligence, next generation command control communications, and of course, cybersecurity. The cloud enables the ability and the capability for us to main components to modernize the Department of Defense technology. I think it's not a surprise to anybody in this room. We have too many disparate networks, too many data centers, we have silos of data, and therefore it's very important that we think about managing all these assets in an enterprise manner. DOD is committed to maintaining a multi-vendor, vendor, multi-cloud environment we will have a combination of general purpose cloud and fit for purpose clouds. I've been asked a lot recently about our cloud strategy and pointing out the fact that there will be multiple clouds in our environment. And today I want to just give you one example of what do we mean by a fit for purpose cloud offering. So we recently released the DOS RFI, which is the Defense Enterprise Office Solution. DEOS will provide solutions for collaboration and productivity tools that are used on a regular basis throughout the department. Whether you're in the Pentagon or deployed around the world, DEOS will eliminate inefficiencies, enhance cybersecurity, and improve information sharing capabilities. For this cloud offering, we plan to leverage the GSA IT Schedule 70 contract vehicle to acquire DEOS. 
By using the flexibility of the GSA contract vehicle, it will allow the DOD to transition to the cloud with less schedule risk and at a lower cost. The RFQ for DEOS will be released in early 2019. I have to tell you, it really has been an absolute pleasure, especially for me new coming in the government, to work with both Emily Murphy at GSA and Suzette Kent, the federal CIO, on the DEOS procurement. We started focus this, focusing on this early in my tenure, and I have to tell you, the collaboration with my office with these agencies has been nothing short of outstanding. I find it incredibly important that government continue to look forward to ways where we don't reinvent the wheel. Schedule 70 is just one such example of that. I look forward to the continued collaboration with our agency partners to create the most efficient and effective procurement process as we continue to modernize federal IT. Our enterprise cloud will benefit and support each of our CIO's top priorities, especially that of artificial intelligence. In case you've not heard, last summer we submitted the AI strategy to Congress, which details about standing up the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center as shown on this chart. And this chart shows you many of the components that make up Jake. Jake is a top priority, not only across my office, but that of the entire Department of Defense. As Jake matures, no doubt it will be utilized by DISA, especially for operations within the DOTEM. In addition to AI, we must recognize the importance of modernized C3 capabilities. We must work to modernize C3 capabilities that match the digital age we are living in today. As I often like to say, a lot of our command control communications was built in the era prior to cyber. It's critical that we provide warfighters with the right communications at the right time that will not only protect but also enable them. Updated command controller communications are key successful mission assurances at the DOD and will no doubt also support lethality. As hopefully you've heard, October was National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, not only within the DOD but across the nation. Although we highlight cybersecurity every October, I cannot stress enough that good cyber hygiene must be practiced throughout the year. DISA has continually highlighted these messages across the department workforce. We have a huge surface space to protect. This chart was one that we created slightly, um, shortly after I joined. And I think it's a really good chart to remind all of us, especially those that provide technology solutions and technology into the Department of Defense, of the sheer scale and size of the complexity of the surface space we're trying to protect. The mantra at the DOD that I have been really pushing hard is the cyber first, cyber always. What does that mean exactly to our industry partners? We must bake in cybersecurity in every network, every piece of equipment, and software that is procured within the department. Cost, schedule, and performance is something we are all very well versed in at this conference. However, what we really need to be saying is security, cost, schedule, and performance. Our soldiers downrange, our sailors at sea, Civilians in their offices, and yes, our industry partners all play vital roles in protecting the DOD. Cybersecurity is the responsibility for all of us to work together and practicing good cyber hygiene is something each of us every day should be thinking first and foremost about. Networks of DOD are vulnerable to cyber threats. Operators and our defenders have multiple problems to face. Just look at that chart for a second. Think about the fact that there's close to four million endpoints and all the complexities of everything shown on that chart. They have multiple problems to face on a daily basis. They cannot defend what they cannot see, and they cannot harden what they cannot find. This is where Comply to Connect comes into play. Comply to Connect will allow the DOD to identify, protect devices, 
that are connected to the Doden and will ensure that these devices are properly patched. The ongoing threats to our networks mandate that we must be agile and comply to connect will help us get there. The department recently released a cyber strategy which addresses our challenges that lie ahead of us. Within our strategy, we are focused on five key objectives which will ensure that we have open and reliable access to information, which is vital to U.S. prosperity and security. Our key objectives are ensure that the joint force can achieve its mission in a contested cyberspace environment. Next, strengthen the joint force by conducting cyberspace operations that enhance U.S. military advantage. Third, defend forward U.S. critical infrastructure from malicious cyber activity that individually or as part of a campaign is likely to cause significant cyber incident. Four, secure DOD information and systems against malicious cyber activity, including such activity on non-DOD owned networks. And finally, expand DOD cyber cooperation with other federal departments and agencies, industries, as well as in the international partners. Cloud, AI, C3, and cyber all will have their unique challenges as we move forward. DISA will provide expert support for each of these areas as we continue to move forward and modernize our capabilities at DOD. The challenges we face at the DOD will continue to evolve, but when I look around this room today, I know the department does not face these challenges alone. As I have said before, our industry partners are key to the long-term success, and I do sincerely appreciate your engagement with us. I appreciate the challenge you bring us. I appreciate the ingenuity and the collaboration, and I say that with all sincerity. In order to compete, deter, and win, we really, really need your help. What I'd like to tell industry is to bring the solutions in the lens of those priorities I talked about earlier. How your solutions will benefit the national defense strategy and that we all need to work together. Thank you again for inviting me to speak today and I look forward to an ongoing dialogue with all of you in this room. Thank you very much. Okay, are we gonna go two for two? Mr. D.C., we do have a question for you. Okay, well, there and that, that, that went gone in a hurry. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir, how will DOD and DISA protect users of the ubiquitous smartphones to protect unclassified and confidential conversations? Where are you? <laughs> that's via email, sir. Oh, no wonder this is like the voice that's coming from somewhere in the room. <laughs> oh, back here, okay. Um, it's, it's interesting, when we've talked about our cyber strategy, we have this really cool place map that shows the top 10 cyber risk across the Department of Defense. And of course, you wouldn't be surprised if I told you it starts with the endpoint. We get in this really interesting debate when you talk about the endpoint, because all you have to do is look at that Doden chart, and you realize there's a lot of different types of endpoints. And one of the things I keep stressing is, we have to step up and face the reality that the world around us is becoming more and more mobile each and every day. Um, and I always like to, I always do this thing, it drives my team crazy. I pull out my cat card and say, I'm not sure how I'm gonna plug this into my mobile device. Um, so it really does talk about the fact that I believe mobility is gonna become ubiquitous. Um, the devices out there are such that we're gonna have to move to a strategy of identity, credential, and access management that moves us beyond the physical CAC, as I believe the mobile device is a device that's gonna become the predominance of how we work and interact and communicate across the department going forward. Next okay. question, sir. Can you compare or contrast your biggest challenges while at J.P. Morgan versus now with the DOD? Um, wow. Uh, moving money warfighter. Um, you know, really, it, it, is, it is that distinctively different. Um, 
And I mean that with all sincerity on both of those challenges. And like, you know, the private sector, I literally came to work every day. And for me, it was all about how do I ensure that, you know, the accounts where each of you placed your money that you could confidently know would be there tomorrow and you could confidently move it from point A to point B. Here, it's all about how do we ensure that we can confidently support the warfighter, enabling them, protecting them. This is why those four strategies that I outlined, cloud, AI, C3, and cyber are so important because I'm incredibly passionate about the idea of just like I was in private industry, of protecting your wealth and ensuring it was there for you each and every day. I'm incredibly passionate about ensuring that the warfighter is protected and enabled every day. Sir, in the past, DNI had questioned the requirement for classified mobility. Can you share your views? I think I did already. Um, I truly believe, you know, whether, whether we're ready to have all the solutions in place, mobility is a way of life. Um, all I gotta do is look around the room and half of you are looking at your mobile devices right now. <laughs> um, I mean, the fact is it, it permeates every aspect of our life, it, it permeates the way we conduct our lives. And I think the reality is, is that the warfighter is gonna need mobility out at the tactical edge. I think we're gonna need to support mobility in a way where it can be de degraded. We're gonna need to make sure that from point A to point B, the information can get out to the mobile device in a secure manner. So I see it as an integral part of the future. Sir, we do believe, I believe we have one more question, and it is. Does the DOD plan to provide overarching guidance to the military services as they pursue IT service outsourcing? Um, to the extent that it sits inside those four priorities, we'll obviously want to ensure that um, the solutions we provide, are, I like to call, are stitched up, that they're seamlessly working together. So the way I like to talk about this, whether we're gonna do things internally across those four priorities, or we're gonna use partners, or we're gonna do a combination of both, what I am really passionate about and what I am really focused on is to ensure that whether it's in a partner outside or whether it's our own internal folks, that they truly understand how these four priorities connect together, why they're important, and what it is they're all in support of. And once again, they're all in support of the warfighter. Sir, your final question. Can you elaborate on the DOD's intended use for AI? Yeah, I mean, we can go back to that chart. I don't know if it's possible to put up the Jake chart. Someone can figure that out here. Um, what is it we're really trying to do here at the end of the day? AI is moving at a rapid pace. There's a huge appetite across the department to use it, except that the number of resources we have right now are limited. When you think about AI, there's two things that come to the forefront. It's about data, and it's about the algorithms. And it's how do we use a center such as the Joint Artificial Intelligence to get after where are the sources of data, how do we bring the right data together, how do we take really smart, the data science aspect of this through the algorithms we'll create and bring them together? But most importantly, what we're really focused on through the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center is this idea that I refer to as the National Mission Initiatives. These are cross-service solutions we're trying to solve for. And what I really believe is that AI will become more than just a tool I believe AI will be a partner and will help us in many ways. No doubt, first and foremost, from a lethality standpoint, but I think AI will serve us incredibly well inside of DISA. I think it can help us protect the Doden better. I think it can help US Cyber Command. And I think it will also help us in our reform efforts. And then finally, just last week, I happened to be at the Five Eyes conference with our allied partners in the UK and we spent a significant amount of time talking together about how does tools such as AI and cloud help us as allied partners. 
fight better in the future.